of Ancestern, and over my right shoulder is the beautiful dome of the United States Capitol, home of our Congress for nearly 200 years. Since 1793, it has been built, burnt, rebuilt, extended, and restored, just like America. The Vice President spends a lot of time here, and for the first time in our history, there might be a woman in that job, Republican Sarah Palin, Senator McCain's running mate. And tonight, a look at the governor from Alaska. Some have called her Senator McCain's Hail Sarah Pass. And just like during a close football game, Americans are on the edge of their seats waiting to see how this election turns out. How did this woman, this governor, this wife, mother of five, this hockey mom who hunts emerge into one of the most electrifying politicians today? And in a Fox News exclusive, never before seen footage of home life with the governor shot this past spring before she was chosen as Senator McCain's running mate. But to know Sarah Palin, we must first look west and north to Alaska. She's fresh. She's tough. And she's burning brighter than the stars in the northern sky. 44-year-old Sarah Louise Keith Palin could just possibly add the biggest job to her resume, Vice President of the United States. Senator, I am honored to be chosen as your running mate. Only one other woman in American history has shared this experience. It has been, for me, you know, a great thing to attempt to break the barrier. But for 24 years, it has been rather lonely being the only one. In 1984, the Democratic ticket featured Geraldine Ferraro as Walter Mondale's running mate. She was the first female vice presidential nominee ever. They had announced her name, and then she got up, and she, she gave her little speech and mentioned both me and Hillary. I can't begin this great effort without honoring the achievements of Geraldine Ferraro in 1984, and of course, Senator Hillary Clinton. Hillary left 18 million cracks in the highest, hardest glass ceiling in America. But it turns out the women of America aren't finished yet, and we can shatter that glass ceiling once and for all. And I was really quite surprised because in 24 years, nobody has done that on a national scene politically. She has strong principles, a fighting spirit. You know, my friends, this great governor grew up in a decent, hard-working, middle-class family. I was born in Idaho, so when I was three months old, my folks moved up. Fox News obtained this exclusive interview with Governor Sarah Palin, shot earlier this year, just days before she gave birth to her fifth child. Do you know what it is? It's a boy. In 1964, Sarah was the third child born to Chuck and Sarah Heath, joining sisters Molly, Jane, and Heather. They would eventually welcome another sibling, this time a baby brother, Chuck Jr. Chuck Sr. was a track coach and science teacher. Mother Sarah, known as Sally, was a school secretary. When Sarah was three months old, her father moved the family to Alaska, the last frontier. My parents came up in 1964 to teach school in a very small town. He came up for the hunting and the fishing and the good outdoors life, the clean environment, the, the healthy activities that are offered here. Chuck is the kind of person, he's, he's very energetic, he's wiry, and he's, um, he's just full of energy. In fact, in the summertime, he would take the television out of the house and just say, go outside and play. Kayleen Johnson is the author of Sarah, how a hockey mom turned Alaska's political establishment upside down. If they wanted to earn spending money, they would work for the neighbors and do chores like stack wood or work in the weed gardens and that sort of thing. The entire family took to the great outdoors and reveled in the frontier spirit. Alaska joined the Union as the 49th state in 1959, just five years before Sarah was born. It's twice the size of Texas and home to 29 volcanoes and more than half of the world's glaciers. Father Chuck took pride that Sarah enjoyed hunting from an early age. They'd often chase moose before school. I've shot caribou to make sure that uh, our family's freezer is full of meat for the winter. We like wild game that's healthy, that's clean, and we do a lot of hunting. After first spending time in Skagway and Eagle River, the family moved to Wasilla, about an hour north of Anchorage. They moved into this house on Lucille Street, 
which is now a thrift store. It was a very small town 35 years ago. It's the kind of town where everybody knows everybody. And Kristen Cole met Sarah in elementary school. There was only one little tiny grocery store and one gas station, and that's it. Sally Heath was really instrumental in the faith development of that family. Um, she's the one who really nurtured their faith and, and took, the, took the kids to church and sent them to vacation Bible school. Population 5,500, Wasilla lies in the historic Matsu Valley, surrounded by three breathtaking mountain ranges and famous for its fishing and wildlife. Sarah attended Wasilla High School, home of the Warriors, and was the point guard and captain of the basketball team. I uh, grew up very involved in athletics and competition, and certainly things that I learned through sports and competition come into play in this business every day. She was so fierce on the court back then that she earned the nickname Sarah Barracuda. Sarah said that basketball was life-changing um, activity for her. It taught her competition, it taught her fair play, it taught her teamwork, and it also taught her humility. Pretty, athletic, and popular, Sarah caught the attention of fellow student Todd Palin. So he was the new kid in town, and he was the best basketball player in town. Todd is just the, the quintessential Alaskan. He was raised in part by his grandmother, Lena, um, who is Yupik Eskimo. His family ran a local fishing business. The young couple soon began dating. They have a unique relationship. Here in Alaska, we call him the first dude because that's just more fitting. Todd is incredibly supportive of Sarah, and yet at the same time, he's a man's man. He's a private pilot. Um, he's owned businesses before. He works on the North Slope, runs the Iron Dog. In 1982, Sarah left Alaska for the Aloha State and began her college career at Hawaii Pacific University, where she took business administration courses. After a semester there, she returned to the mainland, this time to attend North Idaho College with a general studies major. My dad had four kids in college at the same time he was a school teacher. There's no way he's going to be able to pay for all of our college education. She was a good student, but financial struggles propelled her to compete in scholarship pageants. And I have to be honest with you, it, it was an attraction to the scholarship dollars that were offered. I could maybe get up on a stage, play my flute, that, that was my talent, uh, give a good interview, and um, have that gown on, and maybe be able to rake in some scholarship money to pay my tuition through college. The whole swimsuit thing, I don't know if I recommend that part of it now, no. Looking back, we had a lot of nerve being up there on stage in front of a bunch of male judges in a swimsuit, all lined up for comparison. You had to turn, do a couple of revolutions in front of these male judges and have your butts compared to one another. She was crowned Miss Wasilla in 1984 and then competed for the title of Miss Alaska. Sarah came in second but won that college scholarship. She would eventually earn her bachelor's degree from the University of Idaho in 1987 with a major in journalism and a minor in political science. Sarah's relationship with Todd continued to grow, and a year after her college graduation, they eloped to spare their families the cost of a wedding. When they arrived, the magistrate informed them that they needed witnesses to stand up for them at the wedding, and of course they hadn't thought of that at the time, so they, they decided to go across the street to the nursing home, and they asked a couple of the residents there, would you mind standing up for us at our wedding? So one of them was in a walker, and the other one just, uh, they, they went over across the street and stood up for Sarah and Todd at the wedding. And Todd is a story all by himself. Two decades and five children later, he's still my guy.